Oh, on us out to see Chris. This is the first video to Unit 9, which is Unit 9.1 Day 1, talking about circles. Uh, this being a video lesson, so this might go faster than uh, you would need it to. So, you know, so feel free to pause at any point in time in order to make sure to go through, write everything down, and attempt uh, each problem. Uh, if you're the expectation of your teachers that you go ahead and you take good notes in your notebook and not just review this video, but this is a done. Our first portion here is what is a circle? I know you learned a circle in geometry. A circle is a set of points. Equidistant. A common point. Then all these points are the same distance from one point, the center of the circle. Now, there's an equation for the circle. The equation is that you have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. And where this equation comes from is the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. Is that any center, hk, that every point x, y is our distance away. So what that looks like in the picture is that if you have this center hk, and any point on the circle, let's go ahead and let's put a circle in here. Any point x, y, the distance for all these points x, y, no matter where I put x, y in the circle, all of these points have a distance far away. So that can be done with the Pythagorean theorem that this here is the change in these x values. x minus h is the change in these x values. This here is the change in the y value. The change in the y value is y minus k. The difference between y and k is y value. When you do the Pythagorean theorem there, you get this radius. So that's where the equation of a circle comes from. Now we're going to graph this circle. And it would be really nice if it was back in our other form. If it was back in our form where we had x minus h squared plus y minus a squared equals radius squared. And currently, this equation is not in that form. We have to set it up to become in that form if we do it by secant squared. So you can go ahead and separate the x's. So it's going to be a minus 8x. I'm going to leave a space here because we're going to need to complete the square there. So it's y squared plus 6y equals 0. Well, in order to complete the square here, we need this value. The value to complete the square is this b value divided by 2 squared. So negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4 squared equals 16. So we should have 16 here. Or we can't just make that come out of thin air. We have to add 16 to both sides of both. Over here, our b value is 6. b divided by 2 squared is 9. So we need to add 9 to both sides of the equation. So over here it is equals 9. Now completing this square uh, with these values shows us that we have x plus, excuse me, this could be actually x minus 4 squared. When you go ahead and factor it, we chose those values that we added very specifically so we could have a squared value. You'll notice that this equation is now in the form to the equation of a circle. And it tells us what our center of our circle is. Because it's x minus h squared, we have an x value of 4 for the center of the circle. And a y value of negative 3. That 
scatter of purple sky. Because this portion here is the radius squared, we know the radius of the square root of 25 for the radius of the sky. So we can go ahead and we can graph this circle. When we do so, we're going to put the center at x equals 4, y equals negative 3. That's our point right there, 4, negative 3. And we know everything is five away. I find it easier to graph four key points, one being five up, one being five down, one being five up, and one being five away at this point. So we go five to the left, way right here, we go five to the right. We get this point over here, and that is nine, negative three. We go five up. And then one, two, it's like I'm running out of space, I'll slide this up. One, two, three, four, five. Now because I'm doing this by hand and my scale's not perfect, so as long as I go ahead. I can create a nice circle of these points. Now, when you do these, they're circles. Don't draw that in this image. Yeah, you have those things there being fairly accurate. Example number two, we're going to graph this new circle. You're going to notice some things that are different about this, uh, this equation. Currently, we have a inequality. That inequality is going to determine how the graph in our circle looks. We also have things over here. We have five y over here. We're going to subtract the five y on both sides. Can you get it to look on this side? So we have x squared minus four x. I'm going to leave a little space. We know we're completing the square again. Plus y squared minus two y. And we have this positive nine. I'm going to subtract it over to the other side. We just have a equation of one. Now we need to complete the square, just like we did on the other one. Our b divided by 2 squared is 4. We have x squared to both sides. And our b divided by 2 squared, negative 2 divided by 2 squared, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1. So over here. On the right hand side, we have 4. And on the left hand side, we have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared. This here is almost the equation for a circle, but it's an inequality version of the circle. Now, we know from the equation of the circle when we have x minus a squared plus y minus a squared, it would give us. The radius squared. However, in this situation, we have greater than 4. So that means our radius squared is greater than or equal to 4. That means our radius is anything greater than 2. So in this situation, we have a center at 2, 1, but our radius is greater or equal to 2. So that means when we go to graph this, we are centering it to 1. And our radius doesn't just equal 2 when we go 2 to each direction. Since it's or equal to, we can go ahead and show the solid line representing the circle itself. But our radius is everything bigger than 2. That means the distance is further than 2 away from this center. That portion is going to demonstrate our shading. 
all of these portions out here, all of these areas out here have distances from the center being greater than or Q. Lastly, we're going to write an equation of a circle that goes through this center. Oh, sorry, that has this center and goes through this point. Well, in terms of the equation of the circle, we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. We have our h and our k from the center. So we have x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals our radius squared. Now our radius is the distance from the center to any point. So we have the center, and we have a point that it goes through. Therefore, we can find that distance from the center to any point. The way we do that is with the distance formula. So uh, you can look at it as a distance formula, you can look at the Skyline theorem, but in both cases, you have negative 3, 2, you have 1, 7, Start for writing that and I'll spot that over that circle. There we go. We have one seven, which is the point right here. So we have negative three two, which is the center, and one seven that is on that the circle. Now the change in axis here is four. I'll write in, in red so that that's really clear. Four. Then the change in these y is 5. This distance, this radius, can be found by the theorem of the distance formula. So your radius squared is 16 plus 25. So your radius is the square root of 41. I don't need a square root because I know the radius squared is 41. So our only answer here is x plus 3 squared. That concludes the lesson on 9.1. Grab the circle.